Welcome to the Flight Club Podcast, a woman's guide to leaning out. We give you a behind-the-scenes look at business launch and growth through the stories of successful female entrepreneurs. Here's your host, Felina Hansen, founder and CEO of Hera Hub. Hello and welcome. I'm excited for my conversation today with Hunter Louder. She is the co-owner of Tortoise and the Bear, helping six-figure online businesses scale to seven figures by implementing systems and processes that help them get time and sanity back to allow them to focus on their passion. Amen to that. I am such a strong proponent of systems and processes. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this. After building and running a multi-million dollar company, she suffered a severe she suffered from severe burnout and decided it was time for a no, more nomadic, nomadic lifestyle, which a lot of folks did over the course of the pandemic, give her more time and space for self-care. Uh, She has several coaching certifications. Uh, She found that freedom in her lifestyle business as a business strategist and operations optimizer, which I love, suited her best. (laughs) So welcome to the show today, Hunter. Thank you for having me, Felina. Absolutely. Excited, excited to have you on the show and learn more about your background. You're a relatively new Hera Hub member. Um, So I'm excited to dive into your background. I understand we're going to go way, way back here. I understand you were born in California. You were here for a day or so and you were adopted and then you moved with your adopted family to Alabama. Is that right? That's correct. Wow. Okay. So take us from there, if you will. <laughs> Just from the day I was born on till today. Exactly. Uh, that'll be a quick conversation. <laughs> um, yeah. So I was uh, born in California and uh, the joke my father always tells me uh, is when he and my mom picked me up from the hospital, they said, you're going to be so mad at us when you found out where you were born because <laughs> I was born in beautiful uh, Northern <laughs> California and, uh, and I grew up in Alabama, which I always laugh. I say, you know, Alabama has its own charms. Every state has its own charms. Um, but I've, uh, I currently live in San Diego. So I did eventually make my way back to California and I absolutely do love it here. And it feels like it's where my roots are, even though that was only a day and a half in my life. <laughs> my goodness. Wow. What, what an adventure. I'm sure there's lots to unpack there. Um, but let's, we'll, we'll skip ahead a little bit and, um, talk about some of your, your early career, any educational choices you made and, and what set you off on your career path. Absolutely. So I went to a college prep high school and ended up going to college on the East Coast uh, to a liberal arts college called Haverford. Uh, at the time, it was one of like the top five liberal arts colleges in the country. So I felt like a super, super nerd uh, going there. And uh, pretty much everybody went into like science, math or like academia. And although I love the idea of having, you know, three to four months off every year, uh, being in academia, uh, the thought of just doing research for the rest of my life and writing papers was not uh, super appealing to me. Um, So after I graduated college, I was actually going to move out to Monterey, California and get my master's degree in translation and interpretation of foreign languages. Um, Because I love languages, I love uh, communication. But before I made that move, I said, you know what I also really love is food and wine and beverages and hospitality. So I did like a total 180 and decided to go to culinary school instead. And so I stayed in Philadelphia and went to culinary school um, and majored in restaurant management and learned about cooking and baking and bartending and all the fun things. Uh, Met my husband while I was in Philadelphia and basically when we first started dating, told him when I'm done with culinary school, I'm moving to California. So if you feel like joining me, that would be great. <laughs> if and not, then, then... <laughs> and then too bad, buddy. <laughs> exactly. If not, like it was great knowing you. Um, and so I uh, moved to California and got my first job as a restaurant manager in a great restaurant in Carmel, uh, California called Rio Grill. And I was 24 years old, like super young and fresh and enthusiastic and incredibly naive. And it was an amazing first job for me. It really uh, 
I think, uh, formed my management style because I was managing people that had worked at the restaurant for longer than I had been alive. <laughs> so they were like, oh, you're in charge of us now? I don't think so. Um, so really understanding how to work with people, how to motivate them, how to get them on your side, to work together, to collaborate. Um, it was really an amazing learning experience. I bet. Yeah. And for those folks who have not been to Carmel, California, uh, not Carmel, California, <laughs> Carmel, <laughs> California, um, it is just probably one of the most gorgeous places on earth. Yes. I mean, it's, it's right by the coast and it's charming and trees and it's mm -hmm. just absolutely stunning. Did your, so did your boyfriend at the time then follow you out and... Yes. So we actually, uh, while I was in culinary school, we got engaged and we uh, started a cross country trip uh, and went through Alabama and got married in my uh, parents' backyard Aww. and then had a lovely reception in the uh, country club across the street. And then we continued our cross country drive with our three dogs and all of our possessions uh, until we made it to California. And then a, a couple months later, got my first job in the restaurant and we were there for, I believe, 15 years total. Wow. Uh, until we just moved to San Diego a couple of years ago. Wow, that's awesome. And then it looks like you had a number of roles, CEO, director of hospitality, wine sales manager, event sales manager for, is it Holman Ranch? Yes. So that was the second uh, part of my career. So after being at the restaurant and being the restaurant manager, I kind of hit that like ceiling where I can't really go down and go back to being a server or a, um, a hostess. And I don't really want to be the general manager of the restaurant. So kind of what is the next step? in growth because I'm a big grower. I really love to do different things, try new things out and always be moving forward. Um, so at the time that I was trying to figure that out, my father and mother decided they wanted to fulfill their lifelong dream of owning a vineyard in California. And so they were looking at properties to plant you know, a few acres and asked me since I was on the ground to keep my eye out. And I ended up attending a wedding for my sous chef at the restaurant at the time at Holman Ranch. And it is to this day, just probably the most beautiful property I've ever seen in my life so far. Um, absolutely gorgeous, like everything about California, like the rolling hills, the vineyards, the historic stone, hacienda, horses, wildlife, like just stunning. And so I told my mom and dad about it and said, oh, this property is for sale. This is actually the last wedding that they're going to be doing here. And my dad said, well, tell me more about it. And I was like, it's a 300 uh, acre parcel with a 1928 historic stone hacienda. They have uh, 20 acres of vineyards and plans to build a winery. They have guest rooms and a horse stable. And he just started laughing, like, you're hilarious. I'm looking for like five acres to, to grow grapes on for <laughs> my friends amazing. and I. Yeah. Sounds <laughs> and he's amazing. Like, <laughs> he's like, you're talking mm -hmm. about an entire uh, operation. So I said, well, I'll just come out and look at it and see what you think. They came out, fell in love with it, purchased it. And I started off uh, as the event manager, managing the weddings and events. Uh, once the wine came on board, I moved into that role as well. And then eventually worked my way up to a CEO of the company and uh, was there for 11 years doing that. Wow, that is so cool. And to have a family business nonetheless and be able to build it, um, I'm going to guess that's where your love of systems and process and operations came into play. Absolutely, because we would do 100 weddings a year. Wow. Um, plus corporate events. That's almost one wedding, like every three days, we would do everything from two person elopements to 500 person weddings, plus uh, corporate events, family reunions. And I like to say that I've been in almost every industry in the hospitality industry, because we had a venue, we had guest rooms, we had a restaurant, we had the winery and the tasting room. And so running all of that and uh, bringing that all together, it absolutely needed to be organized, repeatable, scalable, uh, because we were a very small but mighty team. Um, and without those systems, we could not have made it work. Yeah. Wow. What an incredible experience. And does your family still own the ranch? Absolutely. Yes. My, uh, my father and uh, stepmother are still at the ranch and um, they love it. They get to visit out there. They built a little house and uh, they still do the weddings and events and the wine and all that good stuff. Okay, so how does this conversation go where you say, <laughs> Dad, <laughs> 
I, mean, I need to quit. San Diego. <laughs> yeah. oh, my uh, so what happened for me is, again, I worked there for uh, 10 years, loved it, like loved my job. It was so challenging and interesting and different and exciting. And you're there for people's like, happiest days of their lives, like their wedding day. It just was such a happy place to be. Um, and also incredibly high stress, high energy, lots of hours, nights and weekends, holidays. You know, we always say that we're working when everybody else is partying. Um, I was a mom. I have a 15 year old son now. So I was being a mom during that time while also building like a, an empire in the hospitality industry. And it started really slowly when I look back on it, um, like little hints from my body that like, ah, this is not working. Like we're having problems. Uh, we're super stressed out. Um, my sleep started being severely affected. I started getting sick all the time. I had uh, heart palpitations constantly and I'm going to doctor, to doctor, to doctor. And they're like, nothing's wrong with you. You're perfectly fine. You're perfectly healthy. You're great. And which is always like a double-edged sword diagnosis. It's like, great. I'm not ill but I'm also having problems and they're a mystery. Um, so through that work with kind of the Western doctors, I decided to start going more of the woo kind of Eastern route and started doing, you know, acupuncture and psychic readings and tarot card and astrology and just trying literally to figure out what is going on with me right now. Like, why am I struggling so much with a life that has been so easy up until now, like so exciting up until now. And now it feels like I dread it, like I dread it every day. Um, so I finally came to the conclusion that I was, for whatever reason, it, extremely burnt out um, and not just in the way people use it online, like diagnosed, you know, with uh, mild depression, anxiety, panic disorder, panic attacks, uh, insomnia, et cetera. And basically had this conversation with myself where I was like, I can either um, quit my job and have the time and energy to help myself and to heal myself, or I can continue with my career and possibly have a heart attack by the time I'm 35. We're kind of like my yeah. two awesome options. Yeah. My goodness. Oh, so I would imagine your family understood Yes. So I was on top of that, a little nervous because I, you know, ran the place and my father was retired and I didn't want to put a burden upon him. Um, I didn't want him to have to, you know, reap my, my actions. Uh, but he was wonderful when I explained to him everything that was happening to me physically. He said, you know, your health is number one. So, you know, do whatever you need to do to get back your health, uh, you know, because as my daughter, that's uh, the most important thing. So I'm ex extremely grateful that he uh, was able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. So talk about the inception then of your current company, Tortoise and the Bear. Absolutely. So I, so let's see our current inception. So about <laughs> uh, a year and a half ago in uh, October, 2020. So going through, I left my career in 2017 and then really just tried to figure out like what I wanted to be, what I wanted to do also to heal myself, which is how I got all those coaching certifications. Cause I thought I wanted to be a coach uh, for a while. And I was online. I was uh, just scrolling through Facebook and a woman who I had attended one of my certifications with posted that they were looking for an executive operations assistant. So I read through the job description and I was like, I can do that with my eyes closed. Um, maybe this would be a great thing to kind of dip my toe back into the water of working um, and make sure that I'm you know, healed, that I have good boundaries in place, that I'm conserving my energy and taking care of myself. Um, so I applied for the position uh, as an independent contractor and I got it. So I, I always say I started this business kind of accidentally <laughs> um, and got that position, then loved it, just loved being like the wizard behind the curtain for them and their business and helping them grow. Um, then I got another client a few months later and another client, another client. And pretty soon uh, after about the first six months of business, I was fully booked. Wow. That's awesome. And the name, please, you got it. Oh you yeah. Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> our tortoise and the bear. So yeah. uh, my husband and I are, run the business and are kind of familiars that the animals we've always been drawn to uh, for me as a tortoise and for him as a bear, there's a lot of, you know, symbolism, uh, especially Native American symbolism in those animals. So uh, both of us have um, bear and tortoise tattoos. Uh, I have a bear tattoo and he has a tortoise tattoo, which we figured was a class 
classier than getting our names on each other, you know? <laughs> and then if it didn't work out, you know, nobody would really know. <laughs> um, so we just were kind of spitballing uh, name ideas and like what says married couple, what says who we are and uh, tortoise and the bear. And then of course it kind of has a play off the tortoise and the hare Aesop fable. And then I think it's a great conversation starter because people are like, where does the name come from? <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> totally. here's a story. <laughs> Perfect. I love it. Absolutely. And was he in the family business with you as well? He was. Yes. He and um, I ran the company. So um, I, like I said, started off in all the departments and worked my way up to CEO. And he really uh, loved, fell in love with the wine world and enjoyed doing uh, wine making, wine sales, uh, wine club. He just really enjoyed that experience. Wow. That's awesome. Well, I love wine, so I'm a big <laughs> I'm a fan already. Um, Absolutely. Okay. So let's dive into your business a little more. Um, again, in the intro, six to seven figure online businesses, increase revenue by implementing systems and processes. So talk a bit about, maybe give us a couple examples of the type of companies that you, you have supported or are supporting. Absolutely. I tend to predominantly work with online coaches, uh, either life coaches, business coaches, health coaches, uh, trauma coaches, somatic coaches, et cetera, like career coaches, like any coach you can think of. Um, I think with all of my coaching certifications, I'm really drawn to them. I speak their language. I understand what they're trying to accomplish uh, you know, outside of income. They are really building impactful businesses that are changing the world for the better, you know, like one person at a time. And I love being part of that that mission and kind of the one that's in the background, but making sure that it runs smoothly. Um, I have worked with other professions like brick and mortar, uh, retail businesses. Um, of course, with my background in hospitality, I've worked with a lot of wedding and event professionals and restaurant tours. Uh, but coaches seems to be kind of my sweet spot of people that I really enjoy helping. That's awesome. I love it. I love there's riches and niches, not that we're, <laughs> there again, are. I'm doing this yes. to get rich, but, <laughs> but I love that you have that focus. That is Absolutely. awesome. And give some examples. Um, it doesn't have to be a full case study, but you know, sure. here, here, we took this client and they were here and then we brought them just as talking specifically about, again, that implementation of systems and processes. This is my, my, my like soapbox, if you will, in oh, business yes. that is so overlooked by so many people who try to grow and then just are, have nothing underneath mm-hmm. them. Absolutely. And that's what I feel like happens that you've got these entrepreneurs uh, or, you know, solopreneurs or even like partnerships where they do everything from day one. They are, they're wearing all the hats in the company. They are passionate. They are excited. They are hardworking. They have a dream. And then they are fortunate enough and uh, industrious enough to get to that multi six figure mark. And much like I think I found in my business with my burnout, nothing's working anymore. Like the way they got to this multi six figures, they can't get past it. And so where I come in is that, okay, my brain works differently than yours does. You're a visionary. You have ideas. You are creative. You're the brainstormer. That's fantastic. Um, But we also need to get to the point where all those ideas are systematized and they can be repeatable and they can be um, scaled um, because it's like an assembly line. If each person is hand making each item uh, with having to touch it versus bringing in some machinery or bringing in some pre-made parts. It's like, you can't really scale that machine of your business without doing things in a different way. So although I do a ton of strategy and very um, specific things, like here's this software here, how these like automations using something like Zapier, here's this program that I recommend we implement uh, here, are standard operating procedures. So as much as I do those kind of things, there's also a lot of mindset work that goes into it of just, you're amazing. You've done an amazing job. And you also don't necessarily have the skill set to get yourself to the next level just because you haven't learned it yet. Not because you can't ever have it, but because you haven't learned it. So that's a lot of what I do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I always say, and I see this um, on your site as well. I always say like, I am the bottleneck in my business. I will always be the bottleneck in my business. So the analogy I like to give is like, I look at everything that comes my way as a hot potato. And my job is to get it off my plate and onto someone else's plate, you know, my VA, a team member, somebody else. 
enough to where the the potato can keep moving, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> just move gets move soggy the potato. In my lap. <laughs> I don't know why that analogy, but that <laughs> I, I see I see a branded hashtag in your future. Hashtag move the potato. <laughs> exactly. Totally. I guess I played that as a kid. I don't know. Um, okay, so talk a little bit about some of the things you're working on, things you're excited about in the business this upcoming year. Absolutely. So I'm kind of I'm almost in that like walk the walk, talk the talk part of my business where I am implementing the things that I help my clients implement into my business. Um, Because I got full up with retainer clients, I was at a point again where I was like, okay, how do I scale this? How do I uh, continue to bring in additional revenue, but without it necessarily taking up more of my time? Um, So the website that I have currently is very much focused on executive VA, uh, tech VA, and online business manager services, whereas we're actually in the middle of pivoting right now to moving into strategy and consulting, um, which is how I'm going to be able to scale the business by offering VIP days is going to be my next big focus. So instead of retainers uh, or even hourly or things like that, uh, the business is moving into a VIP day direction. I love that. That's great. Yeah, because the challenge I see, and I work with a lot, a lot, a lot of business owners, Um, that are at that scale stage is they just can't see the process. And so we Mm -hmm. talk about a lot about, you know, get in a room, whiteboard, just like draw everything out so you can see it, you know, all the way from, you know, someone does a Google search to they hand Mm -hmm. you money, right? And so all the pieces of the puzzle that go into that as well. Um, And we also mentioned in your intro, I want to touch on, um, you are living a more nomadic lifestyle with your son and three canine mascots. Tell us more about that. (laughs) Sure. So when I left my career uh, up in Carmel, I really felt like it's a beautiful area, but it is a very small town. And I was very well known there because hospitality is like the number two industry up in that area. And I just felt like there was nothing left for me there. Like I just was always who I was, not who I was going to be or who I could be. So I said to my husband, Nick, um, you know, what should we do? Like we could go anywhere. Where do you want to go? And he said, well, why don't we move to San Diego and live on a boat? And I said, okay, let's do that. So we literally, uh, I guess the opposite of burning the boats, we, (laughs) we burned everything down at home, sold all of our belongings, sold our house, and we moved to San Diego uh, to live on a boat. Um, And so we did that for about a year with my three dogs and our teenage son. (laughs) Okay. That's amazing. amazing. (laughs) Some people said crazy. (laughs) I was like, ah, you know. Worst case scenario. You got to do it. You (laughs) got to do it. (laughs) You got land right there. You can get off. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So we did that for about a year. And then with the pandemic hitting and my son was doing school from home. And then of course we were working from home. It just was too small of a space. So we um, had to make the compromise decision to move back to land, uh, which we did a couple of years ago. And, uh, but of course still have the boat in the back of our mind as far as future. So the way the nomadic life looks right now is that uh, since we built a business that we can do from anywhere, we are uh, going, for example, I was just in Mexico for two weeks and was able to work and uh, provide my clients with everything that they needed. Uh, even did a presentation for uh, one of the sub hubs uh, through Hera Hub. And um, it's amazing. So you're in a different location in a different country, uh, but still able to provide for your family. I love it. That is so awesome. Yeah. And now, you know, again, silver lining of COVID for us has been we moved everything online. So mm-hmm. you can lead a sub hub from anywhere <laughs> in the world. That's that's awesome. Absolutely. And, and with your puppy dogs, are you going to be staying more stateside or you do you take them take them with you wherever you go? We do a combination, I'd say, of road trips and then maybe like one kind of international trip um, every year. So where we went in Mexico is a little city called Loreto, which is above Cabo. And we're actually talking about driving there next time and bringing the dogs with us and staying for like a month. Um, We're also currently planning a road trip for this summer that uh, we're hopefully going to hit I don't know, 10 plus states, uh, like from May through August, uh, and we'll have our son with us. And then my husband and I are also a motorcycle enthusiast. So our goal is to ride our motorcycles in every state uh, of the United States. 
Awesome. I love it. That's so great. And a sidecar for the puppies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I do actually, I do have a puppy bag that is all uh, armored. I'm, I'm working on training them to not jump out of it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That is awesome. Well, that sounds like so much fun. I love it. Um, Hunter, if our listeners want to reach out to you, get in touch with you, what's, what's the best way for them to do that? Is that through your site or is there a social channel you love? <laughs> uh, absolutely. So I'm working on building up the social channel since I built the business completely from word of mouth and referral. It was not an area of focus, but it will be in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, our website, which is tortoiseandthebear.com, has uh, a contact page where you can submit questions. You can also schedule a call. Um, and then of course, keep an eye out for social media in the near future. Awesome. I love it. Thanks so much for your time, Hunter. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining this week's episode of Flight Club, sponsored by Hera Hub. We look forward to sharing more success stories with you soon.